Hi there. I should start by apologizing. As I make this video, there are repair persons around. So you might hear loud voices and other noises in the background. I hope you'll bear with me. Today is part three of the series on international trade. And as indicated in part two, I shall be discussing global supply chains, which are the lifeblood of trade, the impact of the pandemic, and China's zero COVID policy. In part one, I discussed customs unions, and in part two, I focused on globalization, the US-China trade war, and Russia sanctions. I shall include links to these videos up here. In a future episode, I shall return to the US-China rivalry, and I shall discuss it from a strategic perspective through the lens of game theory. For this reason, I may treat that episode as a crossover into the series on game theory. Before I continue, however, do visit our website where I curate news and publications from international financial organizations and world central banks. Topics cover a wide range of financial and economic issues that affect individual countries or the world economy. For instance, COVID-19, inflation, or the war in Ukraine. Please also subscribe to this channel and be informed whenever we publish a new video. Global supply chains have become an essential part of the global economy, enabling businesses to access materials, expertise, and markets from around the world. Global supply chains refer to the network of suppliers manufacturers, distributors, and retailers that are involved in the production and distribution of goods and services across international borders. In recent years, the growth of global supply chains has been driven by the increased demand for products and services, as well as advances in technology and transportation that have made it easier and cheaper to move goods across borders. One of the key benefits of global supply chains is that they allow companies to access a wider range of, of resources and expertise than they would be able to do if they were limited to domestic suppliers. This enables companies to access materials and services that are cheaper or of higher quality than what is available locally allowing them to produce goods more efficiently and at a lower cost. Additionally, global supply chains allow companies to access markets that they might not be able to sell otherwise, allowing them to expand their customer base and increase their profits. However, there are also risks and challenges associated with global supply chains. One of the main risks is that disruptions in one part of the supply chain can have a ripple effect throughout the entire network. For example, a natural disaster or political unrest in one country could cause delays in the production or delivery of goods, which could lead to shortages or price increases for consumers, as we shall see later in this discussion. Also, Global supply chains can sometimes lead to exploitation of workers in developing countries as companies seek to minimize costs by using suppliers with lower labor standards. Another challenge associated with global supply chains is the need for effective management and coordination across multiple countries and organizations. This requires strong communication and collaboration skills, as well as a deep understanding of cultural differences and business practices in different regions of the world. Additionally, companies must be able to navigate complex regulations and trade agreements to operate effectively in different countries. To mitigate these risks, Companies must take a holistic approach to managing their supply chains, focusing not only on cost reduction, 
but also on risk management and sustainability. This requires a deep understanding of the complexities of global supply chains, as well as effective communication and collaboration with suppliers, customers, and other stakeholders across the supply chain. One approach to managing global supply chains is to adopt a resilience mindset, which involves building redundancy and flexibility into the supply chain to better respond to unexpected disruptions. This might involve diversifying suppliers, increasing inventory levels, or developing alternative sourcing and delivery routes. Another important strategy for managing global supply chains is to adopt a sustainability mindset, which involves prioritizing ethical and sustainable practices throughout the supply chain. This might involve implementing responsible sourcing policies, reducing waste and emissions, and working with suppliers to improve labor and environmental standards. Despite these challenges, global supply chains are likely to continue to play a critical role in the global economy in the coming years. As technology and transportation continue to improve, it is likely that the benefits of accessing a global network of suppliers and customers will outweigh the risks and challenges. However, it is important for companies and policymakers to work together to ensure that global supply chains are managed in a responsible and sustainable manner to avoid negative impacts on workers, communities, and the environment. In recent years, global supply chains have become increasingly complex, driven by factors such as globalization, technological advances, and changing consumer preferences. The COVID-19 pandemic had a profound impact on global supply chains, leading to widespread disruption and economic losses across the world. The pandemic induced shutdowns and restrictions on movement and economic activity, caused significant challenges for businesses and governments alike, with many struggling to adapt to rapidly changing circumstances and uncertainty. One of the most visible impacts of these disruptions was on the availability of essential goods, such as medical supplies, food, and household goods. Panic buying and hoarding by consumers exacerbated these shortages, leading to empty shelves in stores and long wait times for online orders. The automotive industry saw significant declines in sales because of factory closures and disrupted supply chains, while the fashion industry was impacted by delays in production and shipping. At the same time, many businesses were forced to shut down temporarily or permanently due to the disruption of their supply chains. This had a ripple effect across the economy, with many industries experiencing reduced demand and lower profitability. The disruption of global supply chains highlighted the vulnerabilities of the existing system. Many companies had become overly reliant on single suppliers or regions for critical components or materials, leaving them exposed to supply chain disruptions in the event of a crisis. Similarly, the just-in-time inventory management practices that have become common in many industries have left little room for error, making it difficult to respond quickly to sudden changes in demand or supply. The pandemic also brought into sharp focus the need for more resilient and sustainable supply chains. Companies and governments are now recognizing the importance of diversifying supply chains and building redundancy and flexibility into the system to better respond to unexpected disruptions. At the same time, there is growing pressure on companies to adopt more ethical and sustainable 
practices throughout their supply chains. The pandemic highlighted the risks of exploitation and environmental damage in countries where labor laws and environmental regulations may be weaker or less strictly enforced, leading to increased scrutiny and demands for accountability. China's zero COVID strategy, which involved strict measures to control the spread of COVID-19 within the country, had a significant impact on global supply chains. While the strategy was effective in controlling the spread of the virus within China, it also resulted in disruptions to the movement of goods and people, leading to delays and shortages in the global supply chain. One of the key challenges posed by China's zero COVID strategy was the disruption of transportation networks. As part of the strategy, China had implemented strict measures to control the movement of people and goods across its borders. This led to delays and disruptions in the movement of goods, with many shipments being held up at ports or delayed due to increased scrutiny and testing requirements. These disruptions impacted businesses around the world, as many rely on China to produce critical goods and raw materials. Another challenge posed by China's zero COVID strategy was the closure of factories and production facilities. To control the spread of the virus, China implemented strict lockdowns and quarantine measures in areas with high infection rates. This resulted in the closure of many factories and production facilities leading to shortages of critical goods and raw materials. These shortages impacted businesses around the world, with many struggling to maintain their production schedules and meet customer demand. The disruption of the global supply chains has also led to significant price increases for some products. As businesses around the world competed for limited supplies of critical goods and raw materials, prices have risen sharply in some cases. This has had a ripple effect throughout the world economy, with consumers and businesses facing higher prices for goods and services. In response to these challenges, businesses around the world have begun to implement a range of strategies to mitigate the impact of the disruption. These include diversifying suppliers, increasing inventory levels, and developing alternative sourcing and delivery routes. Many businesses have also sought to improve their communication and collaboration with their suppliers and customers to better manage supply chain disruptions and anticipate future challenges. As the world began to emerge from the pandemic, it became increasingly clear that supply chain bottlenecks would continue to pose challenges to businesses and consumers alike. One of the most significant challenges arising from these bottlenecks has been the rise of inflation. The reasons for this resurgent inflation are many and varied, but in the context of supply chains, I will highlight just two. A key driver of supply chain bottlenecks has been the imbalance between supply and demand. During the pandemic, many businesses reduced their production and inventory levels in response to the uncertainty and disruption caused by the virus. At the same time, however, many governments had implemented policies designed to mitigate the impact of pandemic-induced shutdowns. This so-called helicopter money, which I discussed in the episode on the marginal propensity to consume, meant that consumers had money to spend. I shall link this video up here. As economies began to recover, demand for goods and services surged, 
leading to supply chain bottlenecks and shortages of critical materials and products. These shortages led to price increases with businesses and consumers competing for limited supplies of goods and services. Supply chain bottlenecks were also exacerbated by labor shortages. The pandemic had led to disruptions in the labor market, with many workers being laid off or furloughed as businesses closed or reduced their operations. As economies recovered, Businesses struggled to find workers to meet the demand for goods and services. This led to increased labor costs as businesses competed for workers, which in turn was reflected in higher prices for goods and services. I shall link the video on inflation up here for a fuller discussion on these issues. In conclusion, Global supply chains are a critical component of modern economies, providing businesses with access to a diverse range of suppliers and manufacturers, enabling them to respond quickly to changes in demand and supply, and driving economic growth and development. The disruption of global supply chains during the COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the challenges and risks associated with globalized supply chains. However, it has also provided an opportunity for companies to reassess their supply chain strategies and improve their resilience, flexibility, and sustainability. As the pandemic has receded to the rear view mirror, it is important that companies continue to build on these lessons and work towards a more resilient and sustainable global supply chain.